Hey everybody, Jim Edwards here, and welcome back to the Sales Copywriting Content Marketing Hacks Podcast. I'm your host, along with my trusty co-host, Stu Smith. Welcome, Stu. Hey, Jim. This is episode 132. 132 times we have gathered here today to share wisdom, to share insight, and to share our thoughts on what makes sales copywriting and content marketing important and specific hacks on how you can do it better, faster, easier, and more effectively, no matter who you sell and what you know, no matter what you sell and who you sell it to. I almost had that. Oh, that was great. So what are we talking about today, Stu? Well, Jim, once again, I watch what you do during the week whether it is Jim's Gems or Doc Talk or Letting the Chickens Out or some of your other podcasts that you do when you talk sales copy. And you came up with this, uh, I don't know if this was a title to what you were doing or it was definitely mentioned in one of your podcasts or your lives that you said, the price is never too high. The value is perceived to be too low. Mm -hmm. So I took that as like, all right, it's okay to have a sale. Right. But don't just lower your price because you think it's too high. Right. Right. And that's something that that I wanted to talk about today and maybe talk about our own journey and experiences with this one and you know help figure out ways to increase the value with whatever they do. Uh, Because uh, I I have had issues where I was like, maybe I'm not charging enough or maybe I'm charging too much. You know, it's you know, it's real easy. We've done a separate podcast on pricing but we haven't really talked about adding value um this specifically to right. whatever you're doing versus um you know with the intent of lowering your price okay so here's the thing i mean i i i'll explain the the i'll explain the the quote that you did or the or the thought that you did or that you brought up just real quick what it means to me is that you know the the price is never too high the value perceived is too low that's the key and there's two people that are perceiving the value you and the potential customer and before the potential customer can perceive the value you have to perceive the value And one of the big mistakes that people make is they think, well, I'm not making sales, so I need to lower my price. I need to have a sale. No, you need to amp up the value to the point where people say to themselves, oh my God, I need to buy before they change their mind or raise their price or run out of, of everything at this price. And there are a bunch of different ways to increase value. And it's, it's, like anything it's a technique but it's also it's a perception it's your perception it's their perception and a lot of times we don't perceive the value of what we're doing because we're used to it we're it's us and so it's easy for us and we we just don't see it as valuable also we sometimes equate what it is versus what it does in other words you're not selling a book try not to hurt yourself on the desk too yeah um oh, so. so like that book behind you not my book but your book grab one of your books just any of them you got the 12 weeks to navy fit or navy seal fitness or tactical fitness okay like so that. hold that up and to everybody and read the read the tagline underneath the sub the subtitle tactical fitness the elite strength and conditioning program for warrior athletes and the heroes of tomorrow. Okay. So how much does a book cost do? Uh, and you, and, and less than $20. Okay. So same. everybody, everybody in the comments too, how much does a book cost? How much does a paperback book cost? <clears throat> All right. I, I can tell you it costs about six or seven bucks to print depending on quantities. Um, and in everybody's mind, a, a paperback book costs, somewhere around 15 bucks sure all right so randall nailed it okay so here's the thing that's what happens when you sell a book 
Now, let's talk about selling a result. What is the result that someone gets from that book if they actually implement the 25 or 30 years of experience that went into creating that book? What is it worth to somebody to be able to be tactically fit, to lose 60 pounds, to go from being 40 and fat to 50 and fabulous, to be able to be in a position to be able to um, save somebody's life, to be able to pull somebody out of a burning building, to be able to run three or four miles to, to get help, uh, to be able to lift a car off of somebody like my son-in-law did. Um, to, to be able to have that strength, as you say, to save your own life or the life of someone you care about. All of a sudden, that information is priceless. Now, if it's positioned with somebody to say, hey, you know, this is how you could get your dream job. You want to be a special operator? You want to be a uh, policeman, you want to be a firefighter, you want to be a SWAT operator, you want to be a DEA agent, you want to be a U.S. Marshal, all of those things, all of a sudden, it's like, hey, that's a job that might pay sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a year, but it's, it is the, the gateway to you being able to live your dream of service and, um, you know, an exciting occupation. All of a sudden, that's worth at least a few hundred bucks, <laughs> all right? So then, Look at this, hey, by the way, the information that's in here came out of the head of the same Navy SEAL, former US Navy SEAL, who now trains all of the Navy SEAL candidates coming out of the United States Naval Academy, as well as train, does private training with other people who go through these selective processes and have a 90% or better graduation rate in a field where 80% of the people fail. Now, what would it be worth to you to be able to train one-on-one -on -one with this guy and have him be able to answer any question you have and tailor specifically a training program specifically for you? Now, it's like, holy crap. When you say it that way, I don't even think I could afford that guy. And that was my initial impression when I came across you. And I'm like, oh, that's what it costs to do live? Pfft, I ain't buying his book. Honey, I'm signing up for the, I don't know him, but I'm signing up for his live coaching. Okay, just let me know how much it's going to be. Um, and then she's like, that's all? So my point is that you, if you don't perceive the value for your own product, you're not going to charge enough. But not only is it that you're not going to charge enough, you're also not going to project the value in your sales copy or just in your overall attitude or your overall, I, I know this is going to sound woo-woo and I don't normally sound woo-woo, but it's not even going to be injected into your spirit, the spirit of the product, the spirit of the, of, of the, the book or the course or the training or the, the video or whatever it is. So, you know, again, there's other stuff you can do to increase va value. You can, um, you have limited quantities. You can have uh, different positioning. Deborah just said something about book typically costs less than a course, especially a college course, but with comparable results, if you'll actually implement it, which is a totally different thing. But college textbooks cost a hell of a lot more than 15, 20 bucks. Same paper, Ooh. same other stuff but it's different positioning and, and different value, different, it's just, it's just different. So there are different ways to, um, you know, there are just different ways to position things, but that value is based on the result. That's one of the biggest things that I have learned over the years is do not sell what it is, sell what it does. Sell the result, sell the emotionally pleasing result that someone is going to get if they will actually take action with whatever it is you're selling, if they'll push the button, if they'll open the book, if they'll read it, if they'll take action, whatever it is, that's what you're selling. That's how you increase the value. I have suffered with this for years, underpricing myself, undervaluing myself, undervaluing. I still do it. I mean, you might say, do you really? Yes, I still do. 
Um, that's one of the reasons why I don't do, you know, these big 10,000, 20,000, 30, 40, dollars coaching programs, though I'm as qualified or more qualified than anybody on planet Earth to do one of these. And to be honest, it pisses me off sometimes when I see these people, especially over in the ClickFunnels group, bragging about how they've, you know, made $10 million selling coaching. And I'm like, what, what the hell do you know how to coach? What, what the hell? You're, you're like 20 something years old. What the F do you know? <laughs> you know, but that's not, that's not on them. That's on me. That's it. just me being kind of pissy with myself to a degree. So, I mean, we're having a little therapy session here, but sure. you, you've got to, you've got to see the value first before anyone else will perceive the value. So if people aren't paying you enough for what you're doing, it's because you don't see them as paying more than what they're willing to pay. That's one part of it. The second part of it, though, is you have to communicate the value in such a way that they're going to perceive the value. And that's where it comes down to selling them on the result, not selling them on what it is. So that's a big thing. The other thing you can do is stack value. Um, I've heard it referred to over the years as the stack. Um, usually it's, it's stacking something. Frank Kern called it stacking the cool, um, which was for his people made sense. Um, I, I've always just called it making an irresistible offer. You just, it, I, I've always thought about it like one of those old um, scales where you know, there's, they're up here or your person's standing right here and the buy button's up here and you got to stack on, stack on, stack on, stack on, stack on until that teeter totter goes up and they'll push the buy button up there. And, and you do that by removing objections. So they might look at you, Stu, they might, I'll just use Stu as an example. So they look at that as, Hey, you know, I really want to be a, a, I want to be a Navy SEAL. I want to be a special forces operator and I'm going to buy Stu's book. But man, I just need, I, I just need some help. So it's like, okay, well, if you really want some help, here's what we'll do. I will create a course for, I will create a workout for you every week. You can talk to me or text me anytime you want during regular business hours. I will check in with you every single week and find out how you're doing. If you need to jump on a call with me, we can jump on a call. I will give you advice on nutrition. I'll give you advice on all this other stuff. And you, you remove the objections. Well, I don't know about nutrition. Well, I know about nutrition. I don't know about how to lose weight. I know how to lose weight. What if I get injured? Let me tell you, I know how to overcome that. There's nothing you will experience that I can't help you fix. So you're just knocking away those objections. And all of a sudden, it's like, crap, I bet I could do this. And that's, again, removing those objections is adding to the value. Sometimes it's just the thing of adding stuff. So, you know, you get a phone call. You get it. One of the things that I used to do a lot, and then I just stopped because nobody was doing it. But okay. anyway, you know, one of the things I would always add with, uh, with high ticket courses, you know, anything $2,000 and above, was a 30-minute consult. You could add a 30-minute consult plus uh, two... Not emergency 911 uh, phone calls, a 15 minute phone call, something's going on, you know, I'll move heaven and earth to get on the phone with you and answer your questions. You're gonna get a, um, you know, there's there's all these things you can add where you say, hey, my, my time's worth $2,000 an hour. That's what I charge to get on a Zoom with somebody for $2,000. If you want me to teach a class for your organization, I charge $10,000 to do a two hour class. Um, you know, I, I have these things that I, have been paid and that I do. So then you can point to them and say, hey, this amount of my time is worth this and you're gonna get this. So all of a sudden, this isn't a $2,000 course. This is a $50,000 value that you're getting. And that's one of the reasons why we're, you know, we're having a limited time offer or whatever it is. So my point is that the way to increase the perceived value, number one, Sell what it does, not what it is. Sell the result. Number two, sell yourself before you sell them. And the thing is, if you actually sit down and dimensionalize your offer, often that will demonstrate the value to you to the point you're like, 
damn, this is a damn good offer. Maybe I need to raise the price. And that's happened to me a bunch of times. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I ain't letting this go for that. And so that's a, that's a good thing. So sell yourself on it first. Um, and then the third thing is to stack on the value. Stack on, make, make an irresistible offer by eliminating objections and giving them tools, including all kinds of stuff so that they can get, if they'll just, my whole thing is that if they'll just put forth a minimal effort, they'll get a good result. If they'll put out a good effort, they'll get an amazing result. So my big thing is helping people leverage time, yeah. energy, and effort. That's what I try and do. Is, is Same. Like, it, it's like, if you'll just do this, you're going to get amazing results. I mean, with Stu, it's like, if you will invest 90 minutes a day, six days a week, I can get you in shape to do anything. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the promise from Stu. And never quit. I quoted you in an article today. <laughs> that as my as my good buddy Stu Smith says, never quit. Um, but it's true. I mean, that's ultimately the promise. Whatever fitness goal you have, if you'll give me sixty to ninety minutes a day, five to six days a week, I will get you to that goal in in a, in a surprisingly short period of time. If you don't quit, yeah. But most people quit. So yeah, yeah. I you know I you mentioned something there at the tail end of that that. I have done several times and, you know, because I didn't feel like I needed to lower my prices. I mean, I <laughs> thought about it. That was an option. I said, maybe I need to lower my prices. And I said, you know what, maybe instead of having a sale, I'll just add a couple of more cool things, right? Yeah. Maybe they get, you know, a video critique or something, you know, and add something to it. And then I wound up, you know, adding you know, adding to the price because of that. Yeah. Right. And, and that, that works, you know, so yeah, don't, what, what I'm saying is with this whole topic is don't feel like you need to lower the price. Um, in fact, you, you may actually trigger somebody's um, sales button, right? Somebody's going to buy button and, you know, because you actually increase the price and you've Absolutely. actually increased the, the value of that too. So In you know, some like, cases, like, like you mentioned with, you know, your guys on your, uh, on your gym boat, you know, they, they've never purchased anything before. They popped out this more expensive item of the gym boat. Well, a lot, some people look at something and say, what the hell is something that costs 29 bucks going to do for me? <laughs> yeah. No, for real. Yeah, it, it's yeah. like, it ain't, it's just not happening. And so Pete just said, this is great. The sale is made in your mind before the customer buys. That's a great quote. That's actually, mm. that's a great quote. We could do a whole freaking, oh, um, man, that's a awesome. whole, whole freaking episode about. That's nice. Yeah. Um, that's, that's one of the things that we all need to remember is that whatever, and I was talking, I, I was talking to Eli about it this weekend. And I was, we were just talking about anything that happens, anything that is in the physical world. I talk about some metaphysical stuff with an 11 year old and he's like, oh yeah, okay, I got it. Grandpa was there anything in this world started out in somebody's head. It, it did. There's nothing in the world that did not start out inside somebody's head before it was invented, printed, constructed, whatever. It was made in somebody's mind before it made it into the physical world. So that's really, really apropos, as the French say, to what we're talking about here. It's big. Um, and the other thing is that with a sale, what, what you're trying to do, when a sale is made when the perceived cost is less than the perceived value. So what people are trying to do with a sale is to, if, 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 the, if the value's here, but the cost is here, and then all of a sudden you lower the cost just enough that somebody goes, okay, that's a great deal. Let me go get that. That's what you're artificially trying to do. But the problem is what happens when the sale is over? Price goes back up, sales go in the crapper. And what you also do is you train people to wait for the sale. 
Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you a company that I love that does this all the time is um, GoRuck. GoRuck has trained everybody to wait for the sale when it comes to their stuff. At least they've trained me to. I will not buy any of the expensive stuff until July or until there is some kind of a sale. There's a sale going on that um, that because their stuff is ex their stuff is valuable, but it is also pricey. Yeah. So if I know that I can wait for a sale, I'm going to wait. And I don't know of any companies that make a lot of money with people waiting to buy. The companies that make a lot of money are the ones that get people to buy now. So what you want to yeah. do is increase the value, the perceived value to the point where they're like, I need to buy this before they change their mind or raise their price. That's where you need the value to be. But that's not what most people do. So. Yeah, burr. Yeah. And Jay said that um, that's a good thing. A good way to get them to buy now is to keep the price the same, but remove some bonuses if they don't take action by a certain time. So remove remove value. But the problem is if you remove enough value, then they don't buy. So it's still, I, I want to activate their emotional hot button so much to such a degree that it doesn't matter the time of year. It doesn't matter anything other than I want this. I want this now. I need this now. And I'm going to pay for this now. I don't care what it costs. That's that's where you want to be. So there you go. There are my thoughts. That's all I have to say about that, Forrest. Yeah, that's all I have to say about it as well. Anybody have any other uh, experiences in the uh, listening group? Vicky with... just made a good point. She said you can use your avatar to deal with the objections. Exactly. That's exactly mm. what you want to do. Because when you know what their pains are, what their fears are what their uh, what their desires are all that stuff then you can kind of work backwards what's the you know if i had this question what would i need to know in order to see the value so if if i had this you know if this was my short term desire if this was my long term desire how does this filter in with getting me what i want in the in the short term and in the long term so you're the more you can tie what your, tie your offer to all the aspects of your avatar, um, the better off you are at try at, you're going to hit the right hot button or a combination of hot buttons that are going to make them buy, which most people never sit down and define their avatar to such a degree that you would actually do that. So that's why you see sales letters with just tons and 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 tons of bullets, because it's a shotgun approach of trying to hit you don't know what the hot button is, so you're trying to hit them all. And you talk to any copywriter, they'll tell you, you know, a, a lot of times people buy because of one button, one, one bullet. Huh. And you just don't know which bullet it's going to be. Well, if you've, really at, if you've really analyzed your avatar, then you can tie stuff to the hot buttons that make them buy. So there you go. Yeah. Randall, ask a good question. Ask a good question. But go ahead, say what you were going to no, say. I was, I'm was. i going to try something this week in, okay. my, in my hook and uh, hook and story section of my uh, of my items that I sell, my picture and my title, and just see what happens this week and offer just a little bit more value. There you go. See what happens. Ooh. So I'll, I'll, I'll report next week. Awesome. Got a great idea. So Randall says, how do you gauge when you're giving enough value as opposed to not enough? Well, I think the first gauge is you. When you look at it and you're like, damn, that's a good deal. If I was a customer and I saw that, I'd be like, damn, that's a good deal. So that means you've explained the value to a degree that you're, you go, damn, I'm not even, and, and even to the point of like, damn, I'm not even sure I want to do that. I might want to think about raising the price. Yeah. And they better buy this before I change my mind. That's your first indicator. And then the second indicator is sales, is, is people's reaction. They're like, damn, this is a good deal. You know, so that's, we got to come up with something that's not that like the opposite of a sale is like, and I'm not even going to say this the right way, but let me, hear me out. We need to come up with something 
like a value added event. So mm. instead of instead of never lowering the price, but saying, hey, if you buy in the next week, you're gonna get this and this in addition to everything else that we that we sell. So like with seven day ebook, one of the things that we did when was we had a thing with the seven day ebook uh sprint or challenge, you know, the seven day challenge that we did, walking everybody through it. And that was a real cool bonus, kind of like along the lines of what Jay said, but like doing it on purpose. So it's it's like, hey, if you buy right now, you're gonna get this and this in addition. It, it feels like a sale, but it's not. Hmm. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, just, just so g- giving it a new name. So I want to give it a name. We're giving it a new name. Value added event. Everybody help me out in the comments. Yeah. What would you call that? It's not a sale because we're not lowering the price. It's not an order bump. It's it not an be. order bump. It's a, it's, it's a, and it's not a, it's a, it's like a limited time bonus event, but that. Ir- irresistible. An irresistible offer. An irresistible event. <laughs> irresistible offer it's an addition it's yeah. uh I, I gotta get some synonyms for what bonus we're event to do. bonus event. bonus event Ooh, i like, I like that, that one i like that one too it's a bonus event event bump mm. yeah something bump. something where you're yeah it's it's hey i dug through i mean i've if i started doing that Oh, and the other thing that you do is whenever you do something like that, don't be like Sports Illustrated back in the 70s and 80s. Up value event, Harlan Ooh. says. Um, up value, I like that. Remember remember when Sports Illustrated had the football phone? You know, sign up now, you can get your team's football phone. You remember that? Or you can yeah. get the... Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The uh, oh, yeah. Super Bowl, the Super Bowl issue, and the swimsuit issue, and all that other stuff. But then in the fine print, it said um, for new subscribers only. Mm. And you're like, "F you! I've been a subscriber for years. Why don't I get a phone too?" It's like you're penalizing me for being a loyal customer. You jerks! Yeah. Ooh, I like that. Vicky says limited time super bonus. We call it limited time super bonus event. What do you think of that? Limited time super bonus event. It's getting there. It's getting closer. Yeah, I like it. Um, How about uh, value insertion? <laughs> whoa, easy. This is a family show. Um, so my what I was going to say is when you do this, what you want to do is make a big deal about the event to people who have already bought and let them know that they're going to get the bonus as well. So what that does, two things. One is it will help to generate new business. And number two, it will improve and enhance the relationship you have with your existing customers. So when you come out with something again, you can look at them and say, you know I bring the value during and after your purchase. So you definitely want to jump in on the ground floor with this one because obviously we'll be adding to it. I like that value added event. That's yeah, that's really cool. How about, like that how about value doubler? Okay, could be. Yeah, instead of cutting your prices, how about a value doubler? Right, but you you see what I'm or saying? A value added event. Yeah, a value I, added event. I like that. But but yeah. that's you got to make a big point of it that your people are getting their. I like that mind blowing bonus event. That's a good one too. But by by making it a condition of doing business with you that they'll allow you to give them more value in the future, the only thing you don't want to do is train them to think they're going to get everything you ever do for free moving forward. So All you right. you don't you you got to play the the balancing act with that to to a certain degree. I've run into that with funnel scripts to a to some extent where people, um, yes, we promise to give you any new funnel scripts I come out with, but you know what? I'm allowed to come up with other scripts and wizards that aren't in funnel scripts. So every freaking script I ever make doesn't necessarily end up in funnel scripts and don't be a little whiny butt when I come out with a new collection of scripts that has nothing to do with funnel scripts. Just buy it because you know I give great value. 
How's that for a subconscious command? Like um, it. You know, it's called redneck subconscious subconscious program. Buy it because I said so. Um, but I like that. That's an and I mean, dude, that's that's what you do with to win an affiliate contest. That's what you just add a whole bunch of value to an existing offer to get people give people a reason to buy. Mm-hmm. And they're not you're not asking them to lower the price. Dude, my head is hurting right now because that's a great idea. And if it, um, if we had like the name for it, hell, we could, we could do one of them big old product launches around this. Yeah, <laughs> they're going to be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so yeah, that's a good, I like that. I like that a lot. My wheels are turning too, Vicky. Okay, cool. Well, Whoever whoever comes up with the name that we use for that will win a one year free membership to the Jim Edwards Method Premium. Mm, so we go. end up using your name for it. Uh, you get a one year membership. So come up with a cool name. All right. So everybody have a great day. I think that's it, Stu. I think we're done. And uh, appreciate everybody. Hope you got some value today. Hope your uh, hope hope your perceived value was higher than the amount you paid to be here because you paid with your time, energy, and attention. That you did. So everybody have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.